Uh, do you see my talk? Yeah, yeah, you can use, you see your slides. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, let's start. Uh, I will talk about phase diagram of strongly interacting matter uh, and how should we study it in heavy ion collision. Uh, the outline of my talk is simple. I will try to look from the big scale about our results and problems. Then I will give a few examples of crude approximations. Then a few words will be devoted to the fate of nuclear multifragmentation community, uh, which I hope we will avoid. Then I will briefly tell about some results about exactly solvable statistical models which are related to uh, in the physics we studied. Then very briefly, I will try to show the relation between uh, the uh, induced surface and curvature tension concept for equation of state and its relation to morphological thermodynamics. Then I will conclude. So I will skip this diagram because every one knows it well. So let's discuss our basic motivations. The first, we want to find the QCD phase transitions experimentally. And the second motivation is that we want to locate three critical endpoints experimentally. And uh, the third one is that we want to convince our colleagues uh, and the physics from other communities that the goals one and two are achieved. Now, if you look at the first phase diagram of the strongly interacting matter in the plane of temperature and uh, baryonic uh, density, taken from Kabibo Parisi famous work, you see that there there is the second order phase transition curve. So, it is 45 years old already, and uh, then the question is, have we really gone far from Kabiba Parisi phase diagram? Okay, let's discuss also, I just remind about our uh, basic tools. So the experiments on heavy iron are going almost 40 years from now, till now. Latest QCT, computational and analytic is about the same age, 40 years. If you count from the Hagedorn paper, which was pre-QCT phenomenology, then our phenomenology tools are 55 years old. Don't you think that after so long time, first, we did not find much in the experiments to reach our original goals one and two, and uh, the, the second thing, uh, why we do not care about such a, a bad situation in my case. Okay, uh, let's discuss some objective reasons, but I would like to spare some time and do not go into details of the, this three first one. So we, we know that the, the the confinement phase transition has no well-defined order parameter in presence of works with realistic masses. So the second reason is we really don't know on theoretical side what is the phase transition in finite and the short living system. And as uh, several times at this conference it was pointed out, it is tremendously complex to model and understand the phenomena uh, which occur in heavy ion collisions. And I would add one more fourth reason is a separate one, that in fact, another objective reason is that when we face the fundamental problems which were not so far solved by other branches of physics. And let me give you this simple example of the objective reason for. Uh, there are two uh, phase diagram. The left one is the, what we are discussing, and the right one was taken from Wikipedia for usual mm, some ordinary substance. Yeah, uh, and you see critical endpoint of both of them. 
But uh, till now, we don't know what is the physical reason that the first or the phase transition curve between liquid and uh, vapor is terminated. Uh, experiments show that at critical or three critical endpoint, the surface uh, tension coefficient sigma is zero. Below it is be, below critical endpoint. It is uh, critical temperature. It is positive. But what is a value above critical temperature? So and uh, this is a non-trivial question. And so far, the only reason which I know was uh, uh, that the condensation of hydron into a large bag of organ plasma and similarly to other uh, substances is the negative value of surface tension coefficient at supercritical temperature. Now, but there are also subjective reasons. Uh, and one of them is that we, very often use crude approximations, which are not suited to model finite system. A typical example is the mean field approximation, which is working very well for infinite system, but unfortunately, typical mean field uh, approach cannot be used to model phase transformations in finite system, because usually it has phase transition if the system volume is very small, just contains one nucleon. Also, uh, so far I have not seen any mean field theoretical model which contains all existing hydrants and resonances. And therefore practical conclusion is that it is hard, or if it is even possible at all, to exactly transform particles from mean field model into real particles measured by detectors. Moreover, if you look at the critical exponents shown here uh, for Van der Waals uh, universality class and those which are relevant to QCD, they're shown in rows here. So you see a large difference. So one cannot uh, truly study the QCD critical endpoint with the mean field approximation because it belongs usually to the universality class of classical system like the Van der Waals. Therefore, the heat capacity or the parameter exponents, they behave differently. And uh, then we will have different predictions. Moreover, up to now, we do not know what is the finite volume analog of critical endpoint and how to define it rigorously on theoretical side. Then the question is, what is to be done? Uh, I believe that there is no other way for us. We have to make the theory of liquid gas phase transition for finite system uh, without referring to the thermodynamic limit during the next two years. Otherwise, our future will be similar to the uh, nuclear liquid gas phase transition related to a multifragmentation phenomenon. I will briefly show a few slides about this. The multifragmentation was predicted in 1985 by Bondorf, Mishustin, and their collaborators. Then experimentally, it was discovered 10 years later and the whole point is that till now they are discussing the ultimate signals of phase transitions in their reactions. Uh, I have to point out that due to the absence of strong hydroflow, the signals they are measuring are much more clean. Moreover, the quality of their data predictions with their codes is really beyond our dreams in heavy ions. However, Due to a strong role of Coulomb interaction at late stage, they really have no thermodynamic limit and hence no proof of phase uh, transition existence. And I remind you that actually the presence of a Coulomb interaction, if we're searching for critical endpoint, will be our head edge soon. Now, 
just to, to illustrate the quality of their data predictions, this slide was taken from Inger Mishustin uh, talk. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see their prediction. Yeah, and the solid curve is the typical behavior of quantum liquid, uh, while this curve is the gas of uh, nucleons. And you see, they predicted it. And on the right hand side, you can see how it was measured. And I would like to stress that even this little bump on the left hand side picture was measured and supported. And so it's really nice. However, a few words about the, their problems. So what is multi-fragmentation for those uh, who are not familiar with uh, nuclear physics? So suppose you have such a reaction A plus B nuclei, then you measure the uh, nuclei in the final state. And then you, you plot the probability to find the uh, this uh, mm, large nuclei. And you can see that there is a peak which is called compound nucleus. And this is just the droplet, large droplet of uh, nuclear matter. And I have to say that its probability is comparable to the probability of a deuteron. So they do see liquid. Uh, but then if you excite your system, your original system by about three, four MeV per nucleon, then immediately the distribution function goes to the multi-fragmentation regime. And so this peak disappears and you have only multi-frag. And the explanation to such change is very simple, as shown on the fig figure uh, below. So if you have phase diagram in a, a plane of temperature and baryonic density, uh, then you have gas mixed phase and liquid phase on it. And if your finite this final states belong to the mixed phase, you go to compound nucleus regime. So droplet of liquid plus, va plus vapor. But if your final state belong to the gas region, so there is no droplet, and uh, you have only this multi-fragmentation uh, regime. So explanation would be nice, but unfortunately, there, there is no such phase diagram in the thermodynamic limit because of Coulomb repulsion. Now, uh, my belief is that one realistic possibility is to use the statistical mechanics or statistical models. And let me briefly show. Uh, the first statistical model is called statistical bootstrap. It, the uh, idea belongs to Rolf Hagedorn, but the equation was, uh, was suggested by Stephen Frouch and then it was uh, solved analytically by Yellen. And this is really beautiful model. I, I love it. Uh, and it leads to the Hagedorn or uh, asymptotically exponential mass spectrum of heavy uh, hadrons. And this Hagedorn mass spectrum follows from many models, including QCD, enlarging uh, NC limit. But unfortunately, experimentally, the Hagedorn spectrum is not observed experimentally. And the reasonable explanation is that hadronic resonances or bags of mass M have large uh, widths, which is proportional to square root of their mass. So they cannot uh, be observed experimentally. The next uh, outstanding model was Kapusta model, gas of bag. Uh, suggested in 1981, and it is based on MIT bag model. However, it has a uh, pathological defect, and due to it, uh, it can not have the usual critical or critical endpoint. And I will discuss it in a minute, uh, but experiments and exactly solvable models of liquid states, they show that real gases do not consist just of molecules. 
they consist, consist of droplets of molecules of all possible sizes. So they have besides the molecules also dimers, trimer, formers, and so on. And actually only this fact explains the reason of how and why the liquid appears from the gas. Uh, I realized this after solving this uh, uh, simplified version of uh, statistical multifragmentation model that the key element uh, is the temperature dependent surface tension coefficient of large droplets or bags or nuclear clusters. And this element uh, doesn't, is not present in Kapusta gas of Begma. What do we know about the surface tension? I already told you, uh, but what we do not know, it is its value at uh, temperatures above critical endpoint temperature. Uh, but there is nice prediction, and this is why uh, I'm talking about it, that at uh, critical endpoint in infinite systems, the mass distribution of large droplets or bags or nuclear clusters should have a power law instead of some exponential law. By 2005, I already had an exactly solvable statistical model of surface uh, deformations of large clusters. And uh, as output, there was this uh, formula in the left uh, bottom corner that uh, the temperature dependence of surface tension coefficient is linear in temperature. And many substances indeed show this. However, this is the surface tension coefficient of one cluster, one big cluster. But the conclusion which I came was that at large temperature, the surface tension must be negative. Using this idea, our group worked hard and we worked two set of models with three critical endpoint and critical endpoint. So on both of them, the black curve shows the first order phase transition. Below it, sigma is positive. Uh, and the red dashed red curve uh, to the left of the three critical endpoint on the upper panel uh, has second order phase transition. Why to the left hand side of three critical endpoint, it has a crossover. And in both of this region, uh, Sigma is negative. Uh, then we continued and uh, a few years later, we found uh, the solution with critical endpoint. But I continue uh, that in the meantime, I also exactly solved a couple of statistical models for finite volumes. And since no one was interested uh, those days in exact solutions, then in 2012, I turned to analysis of hadronic yields. And the main idea behind it was to improve the hadronic part of our exactly solvable model in order to go beyond the second VRL coefficient approximation and uh, extend model to a high uh, packing fractions. During 2013, 2017, our group developed new hadron resonance gas model which with only two or three extra parameters compared to 56 of the best GSI version of hydrogen resonance gas model describes all the data. Uh, in my opinion, it is most successful version of hydrogen resonance gas model. Although I have to say that our colleagues from GSI completely ignored it. And moreover, Together with uh, young group members, Dima Linichenka, Oleksiy Ivanitsky, and Violeta Sagun, we solved several hard problems of hydrogen data description, which uh, no one was able to solve during about a decade. decade. And uh, moreover, we, in addition, found some new signals of two QCD phase transition. 
You see, the point is that high quality of the data description of hadronic multiplicity ratios allowed us to elucidate new irregularities at chemical freeze out from the data and to formulate uh, some new signals of two QCD phase transitions. Uh, and it is interesting that uh, our results are consistent with the Kissing group results published in this paper uh, uh, from 2016. However, the main outcome of our activity was that we derived heuristically and rigorously the hadron resonance gas model, which is based on the concept of induced surface tension. In other words, the surface tension induced by interaction of each particle with the medium. Here there is the system of these two equations. I don't want to go into great details. First equation is for pressure. Second is for the induced surface tension coefficient. Phi i is the uh, thermal density of particle of sort i. Uh, then rk, vk, and sk are respectively the hardcore radius, eigenvolume, and eigensurface of hadron of sort k. And here there is this new term shown in, uh, in red color. So if alpha is one, then we get just usual Van der Waals approximation. But if alpha is larger than one, in particularly uh, uh, equal to 1.245, then we, our model is able to reproduce not only the second, but third and fourth virial coefficients of the gas of Hertz, classical hard spheres. Uh, the great advantage of this approach is that number of equations is always two, and it doesn't depend on the number of hard radii. So this gave us a huge advantage over other uh, hydrogen resonant gas models. Then I was lucky uh, last year to invent a method to rigorously deal with the mixtures of uh, the particles which have uh, multi-component hardcore repulsion and then I was able to derive directly the equation of state from quantum grand canonical ensemble partition. These results were successfully generalized together with a student of mine Nazaria Kavenka and my colleagues Larissa Bravin and Evgeny Zabrodin uh, to describe the equation of state of for mixtures of hard disk, even, and hard spheres. Classical, of course. Uh, but then we had to generalize our concept of induced surface tension and include into it the curvature tension term. Presently, we are working on the extension of this model to the mixtures of uh, hadrons, nuclei, and bags. But a few months ago, I learned the bad truth and I have to confess, I, I was greatly surprised by the fact that people from other communities are reading my uh, papers. And I found that Ronald Roth and his collaborators from Stuttgart, they came to a similar conclusion about the full free energy of the fluid existing in a convex container, with, uh, which has some arbitrary shape, but convex, so here there is volume, V as a surface, mean curvature, uh, and Gaussian curvature, X, and uh, it is a very general result. And it, stay, it says that the thermodynamics of the fluid is completely described by this free energy. Because I remember 30 years ago, there were, there were discussions how many Invariants, do you need to uh, study the thermodynamics of a large system with uh, arbitrary shape? Uh, in, but it is finite. So we, people thought that uh, you need infinite number of invariants, but fortunately, we need only four of them. Here, P is uh, pressure, sigma is uh, mean surface tension, average over the surface and so on. So you can look into the original paper, papers of this group, 
they're given here. But now you can apply uh, this uh, idea to study the free energy of your large nucleus or very large foreground plasma band. So then for zero pressure, you will get free energy, which, is, uh, which will define you the, the generous factor of your uh, nucleus or back. Yeah, so th this, this is the so-called uh, uh, eigen uh, uh, free energy, which uh, you can calculate through the surface tension and curvature tension and so on. But now I would like to tell you that this approach is based on the Heidegger theorem and is, it is valid for interaction of finite range. Uh, but now you can apply the same um, approach to a convex rigid body R inside of the fluid. And so if we are S R and C R and X R R respectively his eigenvolume, its eigenvolume, eigensurface, eigen perimeter, and so on, you will get slightly different ex expression because of the sign, because it is other topology, and uh, it coincides with our finding, but we always found that this psi coefficient is zero. Uh, actually now combining these two free energy, internal and external one, uh, one can naturally explain the reason why the surface and curvature and other tensions must vanish at the critical endpoint. So the second conclusion is that our group was on the right track. Fortunately, in addition, our derivations are valid for mixtures of rigid bodies and also for quantum statistics. Uh, and generalization to an attraction is in progress. Uh, I will skip this slide about finite system because of the lack of the time. Uh, and also um, because it's complicated. I hope you can trust me. If not, you can look into the original papers shown here that uh, the found solution in finite system allow you to distinguish at least mathematically, the gaseous phase from the mixed phase. Yeah. And uh, what is interesting that all found solutions, in all found solutions, uh, the surface tension coefficient vanishes in the analog of gaseous phase. And so the power law distribution of clusters, bags, or nuclei um, will have will exist in gaseous phase. But now I tried hard to uh, find something general about the other definition of critical endpoint. For example, I consider it as a thermal compressibility peak, but unfortunately there is no general conclusion for a finite system with size below thousand particles because everything depends on interplay of parameters and so on. And even solutions in the complex energy plane. So the whole point is that it might be that for finite volumes, the location of critical endpoint might depend on the uh, definition which you use. Okay, and these are my conclusions. So with the, uh, development of statistical models of quark ground bags with surface tension is on the right track. In a few years, I hope we will make them very accurate to infinite system and then induced surface tension and curvature tension concepts should be extended to finite volume. And then we will have a chance to build the statistical mechanics of phase transition in a finite system. And if our colleagues who are working in Dyson Schwinger equation approach or FRG or other mm, uh, effective models uh, will also solve this problem, it will be great. We can compare with them. And uh, another maybe pessimistic conclusion is that 
to employ the realistic equation of states for a finite system, we have to modify our hydrokinetic approaches in order to extend them to use complex free energy values and the, not only the pressure, but surface tension, curvature tension, and so on. Thank you very much for your attention. So, uh, Kirill, thanks a yes. lot for a very interesting talk. So, uh, do you want to have uh, short questions now or defer to the discussion session? If there are short questions, I, I will be... So, okay, so if you have yes. short, a short question, please raise your hand so we can see or just unmute yourself. And... Is it, are you sure it's short? Okay, so, but only short. Question, In the expressions for the potential, let us name so, uh, you have expansion in the integer powers of the length. It is surface, it is some line elements, volume elements, and so on. Yes. And uh, that components acts at different scales because of the order. Right? It is similar to the corner potential. Uh, but uh, having uh, talking about non-integer fractal dimensions, you can just put one term, let me say R radius in the yeah. some, some power, which changes with scales. So yes. with this one term, you can unify this integer counting, uh, you see, fractal let, counting. Let me ask, I understood. Thank you, it's interesting question, but the point is that this is not expansion. It is a serum, you see? It is based on uh, this topological thermodynamics developed by Ishihara, Hadwiger, and their um, follower. So it is not. But of course, you're right in the sense that uh, we can use this description, let's say, below the critical endpoint and above the critical endpoint. Uh, in the vicinity of critical endpoint, of course, you might be right, because there is still this Fisher exponential, yeah, which uh, is logarithmic in this, in this case. Okay? But uh, yeah. The, the rough picture is like this, and so it is pretty general. I, I hope that we, we can go further using this also uh, fractal and uh, log also. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So, Roman, so, I, I don't see them now. Yeah, yeah, I can.